Hi, we're going to be doing some bivariate analysis using the crosstab function from Pandas. It's a very flexible function that allows us to compare two categories. This is how it's usually used, but we can also go deeper with this function. And we're going to see some examples of that by uh, analyzing a bank churn data set to see when customers left and to analyze different categories for churn. So let's get started. So I've imported pandas as PD. I read in the data set using the pandas read CSV function and we use PD as a variable. So once we have that, we can access the different functions. I saved the data set that I brought in under the variable DF and then I've accessed the head of the data just by using the dot head function. And we can see the first five rows here from that head function. So we have our client number, the attribution flag, which we're going to be using for our churn flag, customer age, gender, uh, dependent count, education level, marital status, income level, and card and months on book. So let's start answering some of these questions using this pandas function. So we're going to go down and we're going to first look at the relationship between income and churn. So we brought in our pandas variable PD and we can use the cross tab function. And if I press shift tab, we can see what that function requires. We create an index. We specify the columns. We can specify volume, row names, aggregation functions, column names, and margins. And we can also normalize this. So we'll be using the majority of these. If I wanted to bring in an index, so pretty much the rows. So the first thing I want to do is specify my index, which is going to be our income level so i'm going to use df create brackets to isolate that column and then use quotations and then i can just go here and copy paste the income category so that's going to be my rows because this is positional arguments in this function so we see indexes first and then i'm going to get my churn category and i'm just going to copy this to save myself from typing. I'm going to eliminate income category in the column that I'm going to bring in, which tells me if someone's an existing customer or they have left the company. So once we have that, we have two arguments that are specified. And if we press shift tab, we can see that we have our income and the breakdown of customers at each level. Just by a first glance, we can see that the majority of our customers seem to be under the $40,000 mark. But you may also want to see how many customers in all, and we can do that by providing margins here. So if we press shift tab, we can see there is a margins equal false by default. We can just bring margins equals true. And now we can see how many customers are at each level and in total. So that's a great way to see this cross tab. We can also do a little bit more of this. We know that this is the biggest percent of our customer level, but we may also want to see this in percent. And that's why we use the word normalize. So if I just bring normalize in, as one of the arguments and I put I think that's default is false for normalize and we press shift tab yes so if I press true you can see that you have percentages here and the margins equal one and we can see that our total churn rate is 16 percent and our existing customers are 83% of that amount. However, we may want to see the total percentage of customers who have churned and not the total per 
percent of customers who churn and are existing. And the way we can do that is specify where we want our normalization to occur. So we can always press shift tab and go down to normalization and we can see we have we can do that by index or columns or all. I'm going to get rid of this and if I use the quotations and all there was an error. Let's see what we did wrong there. Normalization. It's not a capital A, it's a small a. That's the great thing about having that documentation. So now that we have this, we can take a look all. So this is going to give us exactly what we had before. But if I change this to index, we can see now we have the percentages along the rows. So we can see out of all the customer where customers where's the biggest attrition rate and we can see it happens around those who have over 120,000 cuz 17% at that level and around 17% at this level if we did it by columns we can also see that 34% along the columns is our biggest customer base and 37% is at our biggest churn uh, amount for our customers who have already left the company. And this would be the total here in the margins. So we have already looked at the relationship between income and attrition or churn just by changing this to education level. And we can go through the same process to get answers. I'm going to remove the normalization and keep the margins for us. And then now we have that information. So we can change this and follow that process as needed. For example, we can go to gender. So you can describe that relationship in many different ways by using the margins and the normalizations along the columns or the indexes to get the information you may want to provide. One other thing that you can provide is of those customers who churn, what is the average months on book based on the card type? So there's a little bit more involved. So let's just copy this part and bring it down to the next level. And I'm going to put a few more cells here. And now let's see how we can answer that question. We know we want to not use gender. We are more concerned with the card. So that's our card category. And now we have our attrition flag. I'm going to remove margins for right now. And looks like I might have a spelling mistake. Card category has a underscore. Now we have our card category so we can see the blue level, the gold level, the platinum level. So we can see the majority of our customers exist at this level. But the question was, let's go of those who churn, what is the average months on book? So we have a category that tells us how long people have been with the card. So we need to pass it a value. So we have our index and columns, but these values are not what we're looking for. So because this is positional, if we add another column, we just need to provide the months on book. And because it's kind of long, I'm just going to go and copy it here. So I'm going to add it here by just bringing in that value as the third argument, months on book. And if I press this, we are going to get an error because you brought in a value now. How do you want that value to be aggregated, summed or averaged? So our question was the average. So if I press shift tab, we can see we brought the values in. Now we need to use an aggregation function. And right now the default is none. 
So we're going to eliminate none and we want the average. So we're going to bring in mean. So this should give us what we're looking for. So we can see the average number of months that someone is a card customer at these different levels is about 36 months so far from this data set for the blue category, the platinum category, and the silver category. And the gold category seems to lose customers a little bit early. So it looks like customers, we may be losing customers or they may be switching to different cards. We don't know, we need more information for that. But 36 months is definitely a number that we should look at doing some retargeting and reaching out to those customers to see if they're going to leave the program. And in the goal category, we definitely want to take a look at reaching out to those customers earlier and getting a little bit more deeper on the analysis for them. So that is using the cross tab function. I hope this helps to give you a little bit more data analysis. Please leave any questions you may have in the comment section below. This is something that you should definitely add to your arsenal as an analyst using Python. Thank you.